afternoon. I'm uh, Chris Cooney with the Metro South Chamber of Commerce. It's my pleasure to welcome you here today to the historic Thomas Edison Building. Thomas Edison built this building back in 1881, opened it in 1883. And uh, more recently, in 1889, the Chamber purchased this from the Eastern Utilities Company and renovated it. And we're happy to be here in downtown Brockton, right next to the City Hall. Um, I want to welcome you to our, the Chamber's regularly scheduled Government Affairs uh, meeting. We meet the first uh, Friday of every month. Metro South Chamber of Commerce uh, is comprised of about a thousand companies, uh, spread out over about 18 communities, and uh, centered right here in the city of Brockton. This forum uh, features uh, four candidates for the office of mayor of the city of Brockton. Uh, seating is very limited. Uh, we ask you to refrain from any discussion during this forum so that we may ensure the quality of the recording by the Brockton Community Access. Uh, this, this recording will be uh, played online and on cable in the days uh, remaining between now and the primary to be held on September 17th. Please take this opportunity to turn off all your pagers and <coughs> cell phones. Uh, that can also be very distracting to the recording and also to the candidates. It is now my pleasure to introduce our moderator for today's forum, and that is uh, our chair-elect, the Chamber's chair-elect, Sue Joss, executive of the Brockton Neighborhood Health Center. Sue? Thank you all for coming. It's a pleasure to be moderating this debate. Um, I'd like to start off by asking you to welcome the candidates for mayor, um, starting with, with Mayor Linda Balzotti. Mayor Balzotti is Brockton's first female mayor. She has focused on building and enhancing partnerships with local, state, and federal agencies. The second of four children who grow up on Brockton's south side, Linda's a graduate of Brockton High School and holds a bachelor's degree from Syracuse University. Prior to being elected mayor, she served as a member of the city council for 12 years with one year as council president. She also served as a member of the planning board for six years. Welcome, Mayor Balzotti. Thank you. Our second ca candidate is Mr. Ron Mata. Ron was born and raised in Brockton and is a graduate of the Brockton school system. He spent a number of years working in the family business in sales and management before going into his own contracting business. Ron is currently retired but still working with his son in the family business. Welcome, Ron Mata. Next is Mr. Christopher McMillan. Chris has been a lifelong resident of Brockton. After graduating from Brockton High School in 1982, he followed in his father's footsteps and became a sheet metal journeyman for Local 17 Boston. In 1994, Chris decided on a career change which would provide more stability for his family. For almost 20 years, Chris has worked for Viola Water of North America as a licensed um, as a licensed Ma Massachusetts wastewater operator. Chris has served as a city councilor for Ward 7 since 2005. He's been married to his wife, Carolyn, for over 25 years, and they have three children. Welcome, Chris McMillan. Thank you. And Mr. Bill Carpenter. Bill is a 27-year resident of Brockton and has raised six children and three grandchildren, all of whom live in the city of Brockton. He's currently completing his second term as the Ward 5 representative to the Brockton School Committee, where he is the chairman of the Facilities Usage Committee. Bill is also the co-founder of Independence Academy, the fourth high school in the state and the 43rd school in the country to establish, establish to educate students who are in a drug recovery program. Welcome, Bill Carpenter. So before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that the primary is Tuesday, September 17th. Polls will be open from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. So we ask you all to please vote in this very important primary election. The candidates have uh, drawn letters to decide the order for their opening and closing remarks, as well as the order for the questions. So. Um, Opening re remarks will be two minutes each. The questions, they will have one minute each to respond. Kim Prosper in the front will be keeping time and will flash up cards for 30 seconds and 15 seconds. The closing remarks will be one minute each. The audience does not participate in this forum. 
We will now, be, now begin with opening remarks. I remind you that each candidate has two minutes. The first opening remarks are Mayor, Mayor Balzotti. Thank you, Sue. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I want to thank uh, Sue, the Chamber, everybody at Metro South for providing us with this opportunity uh, to give our insight on um, what we think about Brockton and in particular the business community. As many of you know, my name is Linda Balzotti. I am currently serving my second two-year term leading this great city and I am running for re-election this fall. I'm running to continue to serve as mayor because I have a passion for the city and because we have made so much progress and there are so many investments that have taken place over the, next four, after, over the last four years that I would like to continue working on. Uh, working together, we're building the foundation for a new life in downtown. We have an $8 million redevelopment of the Stall and Dean Building by Capstone Communities, which we'll finish later this year, and the $100 million redevelopment of the Enterprise Block, which is the largest private public investment that's happened in downtown in more than 30 years. At the same time, we're also placing a high priority on our infrastructure. We've repaved Commercial Street, made lighting and aesthetic improvements on the, our overpasses. We're moving forward with a main street streetscape project to also include better aesthetics, lighting and accessibility. And we've been working to make improvements on our parks and playgrounds. We're working with the state for improvements to Belmont Street and reconstruction work uh, will be starting very soon on Pleasant Street and West Elm Street is slated to begin next year. We've been working hard to strengthen business development across the city. Uh, we're uh, building on the success of our hospitals and the health center. We've brought Bernardi Auto Group, Market Basket, Crown Uniform, and Linen. Is making million dollars of investments at the old Fairfield Farm site. And small businesses like Evans Machine Company and the Cape Cod Cafe are continuing to expand. It may not be easy work, but it's the work that I love and work that I have a passion for. And I look forward to the opportunity to continue to serve as your mayor. And thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor Balzotti. Next opening remarks are Ron Mata. Uh, thanks to the Metro South Chamber of Commerce for hosting this candidate's forum. My name is Ron Matter, and I was the owner of a successful small business in Brockton for many years. I understand that small business and industry are the driving force to any successful community. The greatest detriment to wealth creation is overtaxation and overregulation, which is happening in the city of Brockton today. My plan is to leverage the tremendous city assets. We have a great workforce, good public transportation, available water and sewer, and below market value for real estate. And how will we as a community achieve this? First and foremost, we must invest in public safety by adequately <coughs> staffing our police department to make our streets safe. Only 6% of the budget is spent on the police department. We invest less than any gateway city per resident for police. Lowering the tax and water rates making Brockton more competitive. Get rid of the schemes such as the desal plant and the stadium and make Stonehill College pay the proper rate for sewerage. My opponents have all had the opportunity as elected officials to show leadership. I am the only independent voice with the courage and fortitude to take action. I have fought for the residences and businesses even when it wasn't popular at the time. I am running for mayor so we can bring our dreams together towards one common goal, the betterment of Brockton. My name is Ron Matter, and I humbly ask for your vote on September 17th. Thank you, Mr. Mata. Next is Chris <coughs> McMillan. Chris? Uh, good afternoon. Uh, th I want to thank the Metro South Chamber of Commerce for uh, having us here today. Um, my name is, again, is Chris McMillan. I have been the Ward 7 City Council for the past eight years. Uh, I've been married for almost 26 years to my wife Caroline, and I have th raised three children here, uh, ages 25, 22, and 14. So well, we're vested here in the city. I've been born, I was born and raised here. Uh, as sitting on the city council, I have the experience with the budget going through the, not only the city's budget side, but the school department's budget and Southeast Regional's budget. So, uh, as far as experience go, I believe I, I bring that to the to the table. Um, some of the things that I've accomplished as a Ward 7 City Councilor is that I brought, I, I, uh, brought in with the Westgate Mall, um, the New England development who owns the Westgate Mall. We've uh, helped bring in business there. Uh, they asked me as a council with that ward uh, what the people and the residents are looking for. They wanted the safety, increased safety, the lighting and the facade. Uh, back in the Harrington administration, I had $90,000 put aside so we could uh, redo the entrance of the Westgate uh, at the Reynolds Highway so no one's crisscrossing over. That has been accomplished due, thanks to uh, New England Development 
uh, helping out. Um, also, we've paved the uh, Campanelli Way. Uh, I've created a home for the girls softball at the, behind the Raymond School uh, using the CDBG money, uh, again from the Harrington administration. Uh, that alone, we gave uh, to the girls softball 25000 from that. We've also given 25000 to uh, Little League to, to, to build those fields. So I'm very <coughs> proud of those and uh, those accomplishments, along with uh, bring, helping bring in Northeast Electric. Crown Linens is another one in my ward. So those are the things that I, I can bring to the table as a mayor of this, of this city. So um, again, September 17th, uh, Tuesday, please vote number two on the ballot, Chris McMillan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Thank you. And the final opening remarks, <coughs> Bill Carpenter. Thank you, Sue, and thank you again to the Chamber for hosting this forum today. Uh, my name is Bill Carpenter. I moved to the city of Brockton 27 years ago. I'm a father of six children and three grandchildren who all live here in the city. My oldest son, Bill Jr., is a Brockton police detective on the city's gang unit. Uh, the youngest of my six children, my daughter Delaney, just graduated from Brockton High School and went off last week to UMass Amherst. I've been very active in a number of roles here in the city over the past 27 years. Everything from helping to build a new Little League complex at the Downey Elementary School that includes the city's only handicap accessible ball field, to calling Brockton High School football on the radio for the past 17 seasons. I'm now completing my second term on the Brockton School Committee representing Ward 5 where I coordinated and, imp and implemented the plan to rebuild the Plouffe School playground at the Justin DeMello Park on Plymouth Street, a playground that had sat burnt out by vandalism for over two years before I took office. As chairman of the Facilities Committee, I've helped to oversee the renovation of Marciano Stadium, along with the refurbishment of eight different city schools, a $36 million project that only cost the taxpayers of the city of Brockton $7 million. I also led the effort to establish the state's fourth recovery high school, Independence Academy for teenagers battling alcohol and drug addiction and now just next week we're preparing to reopen a newly refurbished B.B. Russell School. I'm running for mayor because I believe that it's time for change in the city of Brockton. Today Brockton residents are three times more likely to be the victim of a violent crime than the average Massachusetts resident. The streets of our city are flooded with illegal guns and illicit drugs. We pay six million dollars per year to a Korean company for desal water that we do not need and do not use while property taxes are being increased to hand out pay raises. Today, I hope to be able to tell you about my plans to provide real property tax relief to Brockton homeowners, to create Brockton jobs for Brockton residents, and to take back control of our streets and neighborhoods. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. I'll now present questions from the chamber, a reminder you'll each have one minute to respond, and Mr. Mata, you will be responding first to the first question. <coughs> Please tell us something positive about Brockton of which you are particularly proud. Well, first of all, I think we're doing some things right. We have some excellent businesses in Brockton. Uh, and I think that uh, Brockton is, is one of the gateway cities to the south. And I think that uh, we, we do need a change in Brockton. Uh, I'm very proud to be from this city. I was born and raised here. And at one time, I was glad to say that I'm from Brockton. So we are doing some things right, but I think we need changes to make things uh, even better. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah. Uh, the positive aspects here in Brockton are the residents here, the children. That we've, I've, I've coached Little League for eight, over 18 years. Uh, the parents here, the, the people who are invested here, that's the positive uh, of the city of Brockton. They're proud of where they live. They want to see a better place. They want to have a better place to live. They want to have the quality of life improved. And that's what I can bring to the table as a, as a, as a next mayor. Um, that's It's a wonderful place to live. We just need some improvement. And uh, city council can only do as much as they can. It's the mayor, basically, who is the CEO of the city. And they that's the person who really can make the changes. So I believe I, I'm that person to make the changes. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter? Uh, that's easy. The strength of this city is the people of this city. That's why I'm still here after 27 years. That's why when a lot of people that I know have left the city since I came here 27 years ago, I'm still here and I'm still committed to its future. It's why I raised my six children here. Um, this is a great city. I, I didn't, I wasn't born here. I came here from a smaller town and I'm amazed how Brockton as a city is more of a small town than the small town that I came from. Uh, and every time you find someone who's up against some sort of a challenge or a problem, the people of the city rally around them. It's, it's the spirit of the city of champions. Rocky Marciano, Brockton fights 
its back, and I'm ready to help Brockton fight back again now. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Mayor Balvati? I think that the most wonderful thing about Brockton is obviously its community, but also its business community and the diversity of that community and the different cultures and experiences that are available to people who live here. In addition to that, we have an award-winning and fabulous school system of which it produced many very successful graduates of which we can all be very proud of. And we have uh, tremendous development and work that's going on in downtown and infrastructure that's going on and progress that's <coughs> being made that I think we should all be uh, very, very proud of. The city is made up of its people. That's how it's been so successful. It was built by people long before us. It will continue long after us. But the fact that we have a community that cares about each other and a community that not only is um, proud of each other but that makes the business community successful is something that we should all be proud of. Thank you, Mayor Balzati. The second question will go first to Mr. McMillan, and it's regarding the promotion of Brockton. Recently, the city raised taxes on those staying in one of the more than 350 hotel rooms and eating in any of the many restaurants and coffee, coffee shops in Brockton. The combined tax hike is generating close to a million dollars in new revenue for the city each year. Other cities and towns in Massachusetts have committed funds toward marketing and promoting their communities. What are your thoughts on promoting and marketing Brockton? Well, uh, we definitely need to uh, market the city a lot better. We only we only have uh, fifty thousand dollars set aside in the mayor's budget for uh, tourism here in Brockton. Uh, we c actually can utilize that a lot better. Um, as far as raising the taxes, I actually voted against the tax rate increase, which was in the budget, so I voted against the budget this year, uh, due to the fact that we've been raising the taxes every year since I've been in. And to be transparent, I voted in favor of the budget for the first six years um, because we needed to we needed to keep <coughs> to stabilize our, our workforces. And uh, uh, but anyway, as far as the uh, promotion of the city of Brockton, we have to uh, reach out, uh, find a different strategy. The fifty thousand dollars, I believe hasn't been utilized correctly. So as a mayor, I would definitely make sure that the city of Brockton is going to be on the map, not for the bad reasons, but for the positive reasons. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Carpenter? Well, sure. There's, there's no doubt that Brockton has not done a very good job of promoting and marketing itself. And I think there's uh, plenty of uh, blame to go around on that one. I do think that is part of the mayor's job. The mayor has to be an ambassador for the city. The mayor has to be getting out of the city and be high profile and be recruiting uh, businesses and companies to come here and bring jobs here. Uh, the issue with the hotel motel tax is that it's being uh, swallowed up by covering the operating losses on Campanelli Stadium. We need to stop the bleeding on that. Um, and then there would be a lot more money available to be used for promotion. Uh, I'd love to see a hotel developed at the Campanelli Stadium and make it into a conference center and a special event center that happens to have a baseball team play there once in a while. Uh, so I think as mayor, uh, a key part of my administration would be uh, being an ambassador for the city, promoting Brockton to people outside the city is a great place to live, a great place to work, and a great place to open a business. Thank you. Mayor Belzotti? <coughs> Thank you. Uh, so anyone that knows anything about Brockton knows that we are in a position to do great things. We have it all here. We have transportation, commuter rail, access to 24, infrastructure, and part of that means obviously promoting the city and bringing people here and reselling ourselves inside and out. Uh, we've been actually working with the 21st Century Corporation and the Chamber on a strategic branding and marketing project to help us promote Brockton and the region better and highlight our assets and we've been working on that for uh, a bit of time and it's going to take about 10 weeks to finish it. Uh, they'll be conducting one-on-one -on -one interviews and it will culminate in findings uh, that will provide us with messaging that you need and the work that you need to do to um, move the city forward. Uh, we, Chris Cooney and I have had a number of discussions about branding and marketing. Um, both of us recognize the importance of it and because of that these efforts are, are going now currently and um, I look forward to what the results are so that we can then initiate it. Thank you. Mr. Madden? Uh, yes, I think the first thing we have to do is provide public safety and then from that point on we can be, uh, once we make the city safe, then we can go out and uh, recruit businesses because we have so much to offer. We have good transportation, good workforce, uh, good public transportation and like I say we have sewage and water. So we have a lot of things to offer. Bro from Brockton. Uh, so then we can go out and I would like to uh, have a task force of businessmen to go out and promote Brockton and to bring more businesses here. But first we have to lower the taxes and the water rates. 
uh, and then we can really, really uh, start to blossom as a city and bring it back to where it once was. Uh, I think that we need, uh, you know, to promote Brockton better, but I think more than anything else, if we don't make our streets safe, uh, Brockton won't be properly uh, marketed. Thank you. The third question is about the commercial tax rate, and we'll go first to Mr. Carpenter. Will you support moving the commercial tax rate to be more in line with the residential rate to make Brockton more attractive to businesses? And what do you say to business people who are concerned about com commercial tax rate increases? Yeah, the answer is yes. The, the commercial tax rate here in the city of Brockton is too high. It's the highest one in the region. It's regressive. It discourages businesses from locating in the city of Brockton. It encourages businesses to leave uh, to lower their overhead. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. That's why I've put forth a, a blueprint for Brockton's future that involves developing our water, sewer, and electricity resources to, to bring additional revenue into the city budget, and that money will be used for property tax relief for both businesses and homeowners, along with public safety to put more police officers on the street. We do have to make the streets of the city safer in order to encourage business to invest here. The long-term solutions to this, to this city are not government. They're bringing private and investment, private capital into this city, creating jobs. That's what's going to get Brockton moving forward again. So uh, yes, there's a reason why there are industrial parks in both the West Bridgewater and Avon lines, because companies choose to locate just outside the city limits to take advantage of the lower taxes in the small towns next door. It would be a priority of my administration to, to get that commercial property tax more <coughs> rate in line with surrounding communities. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Belzotti? First of all, it is the city council that sets the tax rate, so I think we should say that um, publicly because you can commit and promise to a lot of things, but you can't commit and promise a 11 different votes. But what I can say is that um, I have, I feel, in the four years that I've been mayor, worked very well with the business community, been very open to the business community, listened to the business community, and done as much as I can in terms of helping businesses not only stay here, but come here, and I will absolutely continue to do that. I think the more businesses that come here, the more business that we have located here, obviously is going to help the tax situation of everyone, both business and residential homeowners. So I will continue to do that, continue to work towards the economic development that we need to help everybody. Uh, but I continue to be open in all discussions with business communities and working with them in terms of programs and things that can help them and help the tax rates that they face. Thank you. Mr. Matta? Uh, yes. Uh, in my administration, the first thing I will do is repeal this recent tax increase. As I said before, the greatest detriment to wealth creation is overtaxation. And the businesses in this city are being overtaxed and overregulated. And plus, we have to make uh, uh, Brockton more competitive. We have to drop the water rates. And we have to make it more business friendly. We have to make the boards and the commissions as business friendly. Uh, as far as uh, taxes go, I think we should lower it and make Brockton more competitive. We have so much to offer businesses, but they won't come here because they're overtaxed and overregulated. So once we do that, I believe that we can bring businesses back to Brockton. Thank you. And Mr. McMillan? Thank you. Uh, just a little clarification here. The, the City Council, uh, they vote on the budget. And bu the budget comes to the Mayor's office and the Chief Financial Officer. We then, if we vote on the budget in favor, if the tax increase, which it has been the last, uh, the last eight years, uh, last, the last six years, excuse me. Um, so if we vote in favor of the budget, that 200% that is in there. So what we do as the Council, City Council, we set the tax ratio. It's a dual rate, rate right now, commercial to residential. It's a seesaw. So if we reduce one, the other one's going up. In 2010, I was council president. I asked, I asked Mr. Cooney and, the, and business owners to come in to talk to our, talk to the city councilors to explain to them what the, what their, uh, the problems are that they're going to be leaving the city of Brockton if we keep on uh, hammering the, the commercial rates. We kind of eased up on them, but the only problem is we actually increased on the uh, real estate. But as far as lining them up, it's going to it's going to take a lot. Um, but I actually came up with a formula that we wouldn't have to raise the taxes this year, use some of the free cash, a million from uh, stabilization money. Uh, that was uh, rejected. It was approved by the Turns city council. Up. I mean, approved by the CFO, but it was rejected by the council. Thank you. Sorry, Thank you. Sue. Question four is about downtown and goes first to Mayor Balzotti. <clears throat> There's a 31-acre site owned by the CSX Railroad in downtown Brockton that has been idle for more than a decade. 
CSX has entertained offers for the site in the past few years. What are your thoughts on this site and how it may fit into the city's future? I know there was or has been in recent weeks some um, discussions about the possibility of enhancing the rail use itself at this site, um, but I also understand that um, CSX feels that that might not be workable for them. So um, years ago there was discussion about residential use for this site, which I don't necessarily think that that's the right use, but I think if at all possible some kind of light manufacturing use at that area would um, not only help and create jobs, but would help to add to the, um, the tax base that we're all looking for so that we can then, um, again, address everybody else's tax issues and, and ho hopefully lower taxes by having um, more tax revenue in. So I think uh, uh, if not an extended rail uh, situation there, then some kind of light manufacturing would work. Thank you. Mr. Matta? Yes, uh, this, this uh, area can be used, for, like as Maya <coughs> said, uh, Light manufacturing, which would increase our tax base and would help lower the taxes. Like I said before, the, great, the greatest detriment of wealth creation is overregulation, over taxation. The best way to increase revenues is to uh, cut taxes and expand your tax base. And we can use this area to do that. Uh, bringing in manufacturing and good paying jobs is number one priority for those who want a job. I believe that we can do that, and I believe if we cut taxes and water rates, uh, we can uh, uh, bring businesses back to Brockton. Businesses want to come to Brockton because we have so much to offer. But unless we cut our tax rate and our water rates, the businesses will not come here. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yep. Um, that would be great if they're entertaining the thought as far as the, C uh, the, the railroad uh, company, but the, the issue I have here is the hazardous waste that may, might be on that land. Uh, we have to do some soil testing there, and if we're going to go ahead and, and, and invest in that area, if it's a large enough area, we could actually probably approach a college and have a college campus put it, built in there, and small businesses. But my main concern right now is to make sure the soil tests are done uh, so there's no hazardous waste available there so we can go ahead and do it. Uh, Crown Linens uh, came into my area, it was an old, old Howard Johnson site. Uh, they found two spots that were uh, had hazardous waste and they had to take care of it. They spent over a million and a half dollars on, on that, so that was just a 20-acre site. So, yeah, I definitely love to entertain the thought, but uh, we have to actually be, do a due diligence uh, to make sure that this property is, is, is a good, good buy. Thank, Thank you. you. And Mr. Carpenter? I think the challenges in redeveloping that site, and that is, a, that is a key piece of the puzzle. I believe it's the largest single parcel developable in, within the city limits. Um, but it, the challenges are the same as we face getting all business and investors to come into the city. We have an anti-business, anti-development climate in the city right now. And I've met with many large developers who have no interest in coming into the city of Brockton right now. Not just the commercial property tax rate, which is too high, uh, but also the fact they feel as though it's difficult to develop here you get dragged over the coals by city boards for months and months and spend a lot of money never getting your project approved as opposed to many surrounding communities that are embracing investors and developers so we need to change this entire climate and we need to create the conditions under the leadership of the mayor that will encourage companies and private investors and developers to come into the city of Brockton develop here bringing jobs and yes also broadening that commercial tax base so that the revenue is higher but the rate is lower Thank you. The next question is about regional wastewater reclamation facility in Brockton, and Mr. Matta will go first. The city has recently spent close to a hundred million dollars to upgrade this facility. When do you see more capacity being made available for surrounding towns to purchase and help with the cost of maintaining this regional facility? Uh, well, I, I believe that we uh, should try to, to uh, market that, but uh, I'm not. Uh, really up, up on that, but uh, I believe that we can uh, increase the sewerage right there. But uh, like I say, I'm not really up on that too much and I really don't have a lot of answers, but uh, I think that we have to expand that and uh, I think we've got to stop burning the sludge down there too. And, uh, Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Uh, 
Yeah, that's, that's actually my, my home away from home. I worked out for Violia Water. We, we actually a subcontract from the city of Brockton. It's a private company. Uh, I'm a wastewater operator. Um, regionalization has been uh, the focal point of this city for, I don't know, since uh, I've become councilor over eight years now. Um, we've been talking with the state. The state's finally, I believe, is, is improving it. We had an $86 million upgrade down the plant. Uh, we, we have expansion capabilities. That's a definite. Uh, ma a main flow right now uh, is, uh, it's a high flow, is probably around uh, 12 million gallons. And uh, we can go up to 18 to 20, and we actually can go up to double that. So we definitely have the room for expansion uh, to bring in the other communities. And I think that's one thing that I have on my, my action plan is to do so. Uh, one other idea I want to try to entertain if I become mayor is to t turn it into a fertilizer plant, an organic fertilizer plant, which is a for-profit. So that would help out the residents and bring, bring an income to the city of Brockton. <coughs> so that's basically, what, uh, you know, as a, as a mayor, that's what I do. Time's up. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Carpenter? Sure. Um, in terms of the water plant, you're, you're right, the, the capacity has been increased. We had a nearly $100 million upgrade on the facility. DEP has lifted the consent decree and increased our capacity well above what we're currently using. We have excess capacity and we're being encouraged by DEP to regionalize it. So what, what I have proposed to do is couple our excess water capacity with our excess sewer capacity and market them jointly to surrounding communities. We already have clearance from DEP excuse me, DEP, to sell to communities that are contiguous to Brockton that have existing agreements with us. Um, so I do believe this is the future. Uh, we are missing the boat on generating revenue to the city by not selling water and sewer services to surrounding communities. And this is also a tool to develop private industry here in the city. We should be marketing water and sewer to surrounding communities, but also to private users that could develop and locate here in the city of Brockton also. And uh, Chris has got an idea on fertilizer. I think we should also be looking at um, the potential of sewage Hands sludge up. to energy. Mayor Bezzotti? Well, it is very true that we did a almost $100 million investment on the plant. Uh, the plant actually does have some regional use. We do work with Abington, we work with Whitman, Avon, West Bridgewater, Stoughton. Um, right now, currently, the consent decree that the plant was under, because there were some issues there, it has absolutely been lifted. But we are currently going through our um, NIBS D permitting process, which is a, an EPA-issued um, certificate. The problem we are having right now is that we do have a net uh, capacity excess of about 3.1 million dollars, uh, 1 million gallons a day. The problem is, is that with the permitting process, the loads or the solid limits that you're allowed to have in that flow is what's creating the problem for us because we can't get that to uh, quite yet at a number that allows us to use that capacity. But we are trying to do that, and it, it would obviously be beneficial for us to share with the community, but uh, other communities, but first of all, we have to make sure that we have the capacity for uh, the projects that we're doing in downtown Thank you. and in the city itself. The next question is about water rates, and we'll go to Mr. McMillan first. In light of the increased water supply capacity available to the city, will you <coughs> support a comprehensive review of the water rates and how they may be structured to attract and retain customers? Anything to save the residents and the business owners, uh, I would be in favor of in reviewing. That's, that's a definite. Uh, our water rates are, are high. Um, they would be even higher if we used the desalinization. I understand that with the city signed a contract prior to myself getting in uh, as a city councilor. So um, you know, we, the, the water rates uh, were raised, uh, I think, six years ago. Uh, they were raised for over 60 percent, and the sewer rent went up 40 percent. But uh, they, uh, those uh, were necessary to keep that uh, the, the function of the uh, functionality of the uh, the city's uh, uh, water department and sewer department. But I would definitely entertain the thought of uh, of trying to reduce the rates or try to uh, help out the uh, block rates, changing them up a little bit to ease the pain for the commercial and the residential owners. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Well, the biggest issue with the water rates is $6 million a year to the Aquaria LLC that uh, is owned by a Korean company of which we're not drawing any water. I mean, that, that bad deal uh, that was approved by Mayor Balzotti when she was a city councilor, 
uh, is an albatross around the necks of the Brockton residents <coughs> right now. And uh, I would aggressively look to challenge that contract under a couple of provisions where the uh, Aquaria has failed to perform. I would look to seek relief under that contract that could save the taxpayers money. Uh, and I would enter into negotiations to uh, look to see if we could purchase it on a favorable basis because the cost of owning it, I believe, will turn out to be far less uh, than the cost of sending $6 million a year to Aquaria uh, for water that we do not need and do not use. Thank you. Mayor Balzati? Thank you. Uh, first off, uh, in terms of the Aquaria plant, it was many moons ago that the city was under a moratorium, a water moratorium, in which the state dictated, the state advised that in order to lift the moratorium, the city would have to provide additional water source. So there were three options available. Um, one was not allowed by the state, the second was the MWRA, which uh, residents didn't want, and the third was the desalinization plant, so we moved forward with that. Had it not been for that plant, you wouldn't have seen any development in the last 15 or 20 years. Would I be willing to review the rates? Sure. Anything that's been in existence for a long period of time is welcome to review, but in terms of reviewing the rates, you also have to review the cost structure as well, what it's costing us to operate. Thank you. And Mr. Mehta? Yes. Uh I, I looked into the uh, enterprise accounts, and as of November 1st of 2012, the enterprise accounts was over five million in the water and over four and over nine million in the sewer accounts. So between those two, we have almost 15 million dollars. Why do we keep going up in the water rates? I don't know. Uh, as far as the desal plant goes, uh, we have offered the city ways to get out of the contract. When we start, when I co-founded the uh, Bucktonians for limited taxation, we've been asking the city to ask for three million gallons of water a day for five days. We don't believe that the plant can do that. Why the city won't do that, I don't know. Uh, and as far as owning that desal plant, right now we're giving them $6.1 million a year, and they're losing over $1 million a year. And one of the executives at the, at the, uh, at the desalinization plant said they don't see that those losses ending anytime soon. So that means that there's seven point two million dollars. Time is up, thank you. Oh. Question seven goes to Mr. Carpenter first about working with businesses. What will you do to foster strong relationships between business and city government? Well, I'm glad that question was asked because it's something I've been talking about on the campaign trail for five months. Um, we've discussed already we need to lower the commercial property tax rate, make it more competitive with surrounding communities. We need to eliminate the anti-business climate that exists in City Hall right now. We need to make investors and builders and developers feel welcome to come in and work cooperatively to develop projects in the city. We need to change the leadership. We need to change the makeup of some of our city boards. We need to shuffle the deck to get some people on there that will look for reasons to approve projects instead of look for reasons to turn them down. We need to streamline the process for applying for permits and licenses for businesses, and we need to put those permits and licenses online. We've got to make the city business friendly. We've got to promote it. We've got to hang a sign on the city limits that says Brockton is open for business, and I am running for mayor, making no bones about it, that I am a pro-business, pro-development candidate for mayor who will look to get private investment in this city because that will be Brockton's future, and public safety is a big piece of it. We need to make the streets of the city safe because no one's investing Time's here until you. we change our reputation. Mayor Bazzotti? Well, actually, we have quite a bit of development that's gone on in the city in the last four years. Bernardi Auto Group, uh, Northeast Electric, as the council has said, uh, Crown Linen. Uh, we have the $100 million project in downtown. We have the station loft projects, $8 million. And I don't think that all that development would be happening if we were so business unfriendly. Uh, there are many business owners that we work with all the time that are very, very receptive and very happy about the treatment that they've gotten. Uh, we have a great partnership with uh, Mr. Cooney and the Chamber and members of the Chamber. We work very closely with them to help uh, business owners who come into my office all the time with plans and developments that they have. We're working with SEED right now to develop some microloan programmings to help uh, programs to help small businesses who need just a small bit of capital. Uh, we are working and finalizing on permitting and navigation guides to help business owners. And I think that we've done and worked very well with um, businesses in the community. Thank you. Mr. Mata? Yes, uh, I think first we have to make the, the streets safe. I believe that uh, businesses uh, 
in, in the city of uh, being overtaxed and overregulated. I have talked to many businessmen and many of them told me that businesses will not come to Brockton. I've talked to other businesses who said that the regulations and, and the uh, requirements for fees and uh, uh, apply, you know, uh, excuse me. <coughs> uh, so we have to make a business, uh, city hall business friendly. We need to make the boards and commissioners and, and businesses uh, business friendly. And right now they're not business friendly, <coughs> not from the, the, the businesses that I've talked to. They all claim that they're being, uh, they uh, not being friendly to businesses, that they overregulate them and that they, uh, they, they make the uh, permit and requirements uh, very difficult to get. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yep, uh, thank you. Uh, very proud of my record as a City Council Ward 7 working with the businesses in my area, uh, which could be whether, whether it's New England Development Loans, the Westgate Mall, um, Northeast Electric, uh, Crown Linens. Uh, <coughs> For Mary, Mary Walden and myself worked three and a half years for Crown, with Crown Linens. Uh, I didn't do it all myself. I have to admit, I definitely will admit that to be the first one. It takes the City Council to approve, uh, to approve the uh, tax increment financing. That's one of the arms we use to bring in these businesses. We use that with the Northeast Electric. We use that with Crown Linens. So uh, I definitely have, uh, you know, the experience doing that. My action plan actually, do, if you looked at it on my website, I'm looking to do a tax uh, incre increase I mean, sorry, tax incentive financing for the Main Street quarter for new businesses and existing businesses in the downtown area. Um, we, I, I actually, four years ago, passed. I had the council, with the help of the council, we approved the uh, 43D, which is expedited permitting for large businesses. So that's already been in place to, to the area. Up. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, the next minutes. question is for <laughs> Mayor Balzati first uh, around the city charter. Would you plan to implement a review of the city charter, and if so, what aspects would you like to see changed? I um, have never actually contemplated review of the city charter. We've thought more about looking at and reviewing the city ordinances because that has an impact both on business development and residential growth. Um, I, I don't think that as I said before with the water rates, I don't think reviewing anything is bad. Um, so I think, you know, anything that you do to review and improve things is a good thing. But I think the biggest um, undertaking for the city right now would be really to, if we had the opportunity to review the city ordinances, because that would have a um, more direct impact, I think, on people and, and businesses alike. Thank you. Mr. Maddox? Uh, yes. Uh uh, yes, uh, excuse me. Uh, no, I, I think that uh, we might want to try to look at uh, maybe changing the form of government in the city. I don't believe that this Plan B form of government is, is working as well. I think we should have a strong mayor and a weak council. Uh, but other than that, I, I feel that uh, I feel we don't need to review anymore. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah, um, as Mr. Matt alluded to, we are a Plan B government, basically, a strong strong council, weak mayor. But basically, you, you, the mayor um, implements the, she's, uh, he or she is the uh, CEO of the city of Rock, and they're the executor, uh, executive side of the city. The council is the legislative side. It's been working well if you have a strong person that leads the, leads the group. Uh, as far as like the mayor goes, so if the mayor wants to implement something, uh, to this to dramatic change in the city of Brockton wants to ask for the ordinance change to be done, then they have the great good rapport with the city council. That those situations and those uh, ordinances can and will be done. So it's up to the basically the mayor's uh, report with the city council, and the city council will uh, basically review it and then accept it. So uh, you need a strong leader, and that's what I bring to the table is be strong leadership. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter? Sure. Well, I've got to say, I've been knocking on doors and walking the neighborhoods of the city for about five months now, and not one person has asked me about the city charter. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's a pressing issue to the average Brocktonian. When I'm knocking on doors, people are talking to me about crime, they're talking about jobs, they're talking about their water and tax bills. They want to know what we're going to do about that. So yeah, I'd love to have the philosophical debate sometime. And I. Agree, maybe we should be looking at another form of government, but I don't think it's the first priority. I think the residents, the residents of this city want to know, what are we going to do about making the streets safe? What are we going to do about getting their taxes down? What are we going to do about revitalizing the economy so they can find a job? Those are the number one issues facing the residents of this city. Thank you. 
The next question will go to Mr. Matta first about regional, regional leadership. What are your thoughts regarding issues of regional importance and how would you, how would you engage surrounding towns in possible solutions? Well, I think we should uh, uh, work with the surrounding towns. We should work with the county uh, in ways that we can save money by working with the county. Uh, and we should try to, uh, like I say, regionalize the uh, water and sewer. Uh, and we should really try to get more in tune with the, with the local areas. Just find ways that we can work together to save the city money and the town money. We can work with the county. There is a 26 uh, towns in one city in the county and I believe if we work together we could probably uh, improve the area and uh, uh, bring uh, this, the area together so that we can uh, work to make the area better. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah, uh, we definitely should have some type of forum set up uh, you, uh, utilizing the, the chambers of the, around the area. Uh, Metro South here, the Stoughton, uh, we should actually have a forum set up where the local towns will come in together. We can have it at the Shaw Center and have a business business meeting, and and, and 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 invest and have them try to invest in the city, or and have them plug their own place. But we need to extend out there a, a welcoming hand. Right now, it's been shut off to the regular to the res, uh, surrounding areas um, where the uh, you know 100. Uh, 800 pound gorilla basically in a room for as far as the city goes. Nobody really wants to deal with us, um, but I, I, as I'm mayor, when I become mayor, I'll definitely extend the welcome, extend it especially from the chamber, and you, utilize uh, their contacts, and uh, I think that we can get a lot done that way. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter? Yeah. I think we should be the leader of the region. We are the major city in the area. A lot of folks uh, do uh, work in the city who live in surrounding towns. Uh, so I think that in terms of developing business into the city, uh, you know, a regional approach may help. Um, but again, I, I think that we should be leading the region as the major city, and uh, we should be looking for more opportunities to develop our resources and assets here in the city by partnering with the surrounding communities. I mean, we talk about selling water, selling sewer to surrounding communities, absolutely. Regionalizing water and sewer to the benefit of the city of Brockton budget is part of my plan. Thank you. Mayor, Mayor Rosati? Well, actually, in terms of the region, Brockton is really the center. And as Brockton goes, I think the whole region grows. And the better that Brockton does, the better that everybody does, because people in the various communities either work or support businesses here. Uh, I think we've done really well in reaching out to other communities. We've had uh, conferences on, on wastewater and water and in, in usage where we've asked for regional input. Uh, we've actually, out of my office, partnered with some uh, several communities on grants. Uh, I had been told previously when I first came into office that Brockton hadn't really engaged communities in, in the past several years, so I made it a point to reach out to them uh, to attend various meetings where there were other representatives from communities that surround Brockton and um, even serving on the bad advisory board there are other members of other communities there and I think we've developed uh, partnerships and relationships that didn't exist over the last four years so I think we're doing very well but that does not mean that there's not room for improvement but I think we've um, really made an effort Time, to do that. Time's up. Thank you. The next questions come from constituent questions that were submitted prior to this event. <coughs> the first question will go first to Mr. Mc, Mr. McMillan around technology. How do you see technology playing a role in your administration, and what types of investment in technology would you anticipate? Well, we've uh, we definitely have to invest in some technology here in Brockton. Uh, it's one of the uh, problems I see with the city hall is that. Uh, and in, in spite of my action plans, to institute electronic permitting for it to be more business friendly. Uh, we don't we don't have that right now. Every different department, uh, whether this be water department, the sewer department, um, there's different type of payments they allow. Uh, the clerk, city clerks, is cash only. Uh, we have to basically get a big, get a better uh, better fix on uh, that. As far as and the technology f will fall into that. Um, we could, we have to. Improve our website definitely. It's not really a really customer friendly. We got to put all the permits online. We have to put all the paperwork online, uh, so people can access it and pay online. And they don't. So that's part of electronic permitting that as I instituted, will institute. So technology is a big, big thing, a big plus for the city. And I don't think we're uh, utilizing it at all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. 
Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we our technology uh, in terms of municipal services here in the city, it's our, our website's archaic. Uh, we're way behind the surrounding communities. Uh, we All of our permits and licenses should be available online. I'll give you an example. At the Board of Health where I work, these certificates of fitness are only available on Friday afternoon. So if somebody qualifies for their permit on Monday, they've got to wait until Friday to get their to get their paper copy of their permit. That's ridiculous. They wonder why people don't want to invest in properties in the city. Uh, I would streamline the building permit process. I would eliminate a couple of the sign-offs. I'd make it uh, the entire building permit application process online, just like the city of Boston has done very effectively. Uh, major upgrade of the website. And I would also uh, be live streaming city board and meetings on our website so that any resident, whether they have Comcast or not, can see what's going on in city government, even at the subcommittee level where the real work takes place. Thank you. Mayor Basadi? Well, as a matter of fact, as part of our plan over the last four years, we have upgraded uh, some of the technology that we have. The website is actually much better than it was before. Uh, we've been working on that. In addition to that, we've worked uh, to get grants in order to do GIS improvements so that people can get m maps and plots and, and um, parcels online, which the city did not have that before. There still needs to be enhancement to that, but at least some of it is there now. It was never there before. And currently we are right now in the process of uh, implementing the C-Click Fix technology, which will allow people from their smartphones to be able to report potholes and other things to DPW so that we can have faster response time in order to be able to make repairs and have a, a one funnel way to get it in. Sometimes people don't have time to make a call or send an email, but they'll be able to do that from their smartphone. So technology is very important. There's a lot you can do with it. Thank you, Tanja. Hmm. Mr. Mata? Uh, yes, it's very important that we have the technology, but we also have to train the uh, people to run it. Uh, as far as we know, is we had a lot of problems, uh, especially with the water bills and, and uh, other problems, because when the, the people at City Hall are not properly trained. We should have uh, more online uh, permits and stuff like that so that we can get through the process a little faster and streamline it. But more important, we have to train the people on how to use this new technology. Right now, I don't believe that most of them are properly trained. Thank you. The next constituent, constituent question is about the power plant, and we'll go to <coughs> Mr. Carpenter first. The proposed power plant brings jobs, taxes, and water usage that the city needs desperately. What specifically is it that the candidates object to that is harmful to the residents of the city? I think the other three all do a much better job of answering that than I will. Um, <laughs> The, uh, uh, my position has been clear. Uh, we've, lo in litigation between the city and the developers of the proposed electric plant, there have been nine decisions and appeals. The city of Brockton has lost all nine at a cost of over a million dollars in outside legal fees. <coughs> I believe it's time to negotiate an agreement that would be in the best interests of the residents of the city, uh, an agreement that would include profit sharing, an agreement that would include the developers dropping their $68 million civil rights lawsuit so that we can get moving forward with the project to bring millions of dollars per year between water, taxes, about $7.5 million a year into the city. A, uh, a $50 million union payroll on a three-year build-out that would create six to 700 high-paying union jobs, permanent jobs down the road. Um, I think it's time not just to let them build whatever they want, but it's time to sit down and negotiate an agreement that makes sense for the people of Brockton. We need that money to put cops on the Thank streets. You. Mayor Balzotti? Thank you. Well, the way that I differ from the other candidates is due to the fact that I am uh, currently in office and the city is involved in litigation. I obviously have to be careful about uh, how I respond, so I will be quick. Uh, there are environmental and health concerns that I have about this project that I've had since from the outset, and I just don't believe that you can put a price on uh, uh, people's health, and I will just leave it at that. Thank you. Mr. Mehta? Uh, yes, health problems is one of the things that are enough uh, pollution down there in an area with a wastewater treatment plant and the dump. But also there are problems with power plants. One of the plants that Mr. Uh, Carpenter showed on his uh, video uh, had 12 major violations of the Clean Water Act. Another one went bankrupt. If we partner with these uh, power plants and they go bankrupt, we're going to end up holding the bag. So there's no profits there. 
Another thing too is if we uh, if we partner with them, uh, the profit sharing won't be there. And if we if this thing goes bankrupt, we're stuck with another Montrossan, uh, like the power uh, like the desal plant in the Rock Stadium. It's another bad deal for the city. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah, I'm totally against this power plant because the uh, health health concerns I have for the residents down in Ward 4, um, they they keep on coming up with these what I call fuzzy math. Um, and, and I believe the fuzzy math is what Mr. Carpenter got, into, got had problems with of his own personal finances. So um, we have to we have to take we're we're elected officials here. Uh, we're elected by the residents of, Ward, uh, of, the, of the city of Brockton. We have to represent them as, as, with our due diligence. The, they keep on saying that all kinds of million, millions of dollars are bringing in income. I don't see it there. I don't see it. That's going to take three years to build. Uh, by, if we get elected now, the money's not going to be there in the first term of the mayor, or whichever mayor one of us become mayor. So it's basically a, 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 it's just not a good fit for the city. Um, it, it, the air quality index is poor down there right now. Anything else added to it is going to make it even worse. So, health and welfare of the residents of the city and down that area mean more to me than a, some fuzzy math. Thank Tanda, you. Thank you. The next question will go first to the mayor about education. If elected in your role as chair of the school committee, what changes or innovations do you anticipate introducing for the benefit of students in the Brockton schools? We are actually doing quite well within the school system. We are waiting for um, a results from some scores that will be um, announced probably in another few weeks, and we'll have a better idea of, of those areas in which we have to improve. We'd ha we have had some areas where we have worked to increase scores for both elementary and middle school. We've done work at the Huntington School and at East Middle School, and um, I believe those efforts have um, borne fruit, and they might be able to be utilized uh, as well at other schools. I think the biggest uh, thing that we're going <coughs> to deal with in the next few years in the school system is the growing size of the school system and where we're going to put all these people and how we're going to address space needs for the system. I think that's going to be one of the overarching issues for the school system in the next several years and for the city itself. Thank you. Mr. Meta? Yes, Brockton is one of the best school systems around. And uh, I believe that uh, with the hiring of Kathleen Smith, it's going to get even better. Uh, we need to uh, probably streamline uh, what we, uh, the schools, uh, the departments at school. <coughs> Excuse me, but I believe that we, we right now have the, one of the best school systems in the country. And uh, I believe that with Kathleen Smith, it's going to get even better. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah, we definitely have one of the best school systems around. Um, I was uh, I was on the board of the new school subcommittees of the Pluff, the Angelo, the uh, the Unknown, along with the George and the Baker. So we made sure that we <coughs> they, we had the technology and if available for those students, uh, you know, pertaining to like smart boards and all that. Uh, we definitely we invested. We should invest heavily in our children. So uh, it's as far as uh, you know the school system goes. We I do have concern with the expansion. I'm mean, hearing. Uh, uh, which Mr. Carpenter probably has more of the details of that since he's on the school committee. But we're going to be looking at over 20,000 students within the next five years. So we definitely have to find a place for them. Uh, right now, my, my ward in Ward 7, the Howard School, is vacant. Um, we have some people might want to look at that. So I hope that the school department can make up their mind if they want to take the building back for the expansion or that we're going to lose that, that property. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Carpenter? Yeah, sure. It, it's been my uh, honor and privilege to serve on the Brockton School Committee for the past four years, and we do have a great school system. The biggest challenge we're facing right now is an exploding student population. We opened school two days ago, 810 more students than we had last year. Uh, we're adding a school back online this year, the B.B. Russell, uh, but we uh, need and we have proposed and going to work on a master plan to look at all our facilities because we're going to need two more buildings in the very near future to handle these students. It's also a challenge to us in the way the state reimburses us because we collect for this year's students next year. So we're at a big disadvantage around the other surrounding communities whose populations are going down. We, in essence, always have to cover the cost of the increase in students for a year before we start getting reimbursed for them the following year. So there's a built-in budgetary issue with having a growing student population, and we're going to have to create more classrooms and create them quickly. But we also need to do a better job of letting the rest of the world know what great public 
public schools we have in the city. And I did support Kathy Smith Time's as up, the thank superintendent, you. as well as I supported her four years ago when she didn't get the job. The next question will go first to Mr. Matta about the Brockton Fairgrounds. What opportunities do you see to improve the aesthetic qualities of Brockton, including the old State House building at the fairgrounds? Uh, right now, the fairgrounds is uh, being owned by Mr. Carney, and the, uh, fair, the Brockton Fair is not what it used to be. Uh, my understanding is that he's going to try to develop it. Or I hear rumors that he's going to put Walmart in there. The old state building, I believe, was one time was going to be taken over by the phone company. Uh, I don't know. I haven't been near that <laughs> uh, building in quite a while, but uh, I don't know what uh, more we can do with the fairgrounds. Uh, I believe that uh, it can be probably developed, uh, but I don't know what Mr. Carney has in mind for it. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah. Uh the old state building is an eyesore. Uh, any, you do, anyone driving down Belmont Street, which is the gateway uh, entrance of the city from the highway, will see a, an old building with top uh, <coughs> on the roof and such. So we definitely have to go after Mr. Connie and, ask, and, and try to approach him and ask him to fix that up. Either fix it up or, or, or we'll take it down. Um, it's, I know it's it's, it's a privately owned uh, building, but it's definitely something that we should be uh, trying to either partner with Mr. Connie and do, doing some uh, building there or uh, where basically a new school may be uh, built there or, or something and something to that effect. But we have to approach Mr. Carney, uh, who owns that property, it's privately owned, and, and address the situations which, uh, like I said, was an, it's, a, it's a great eyesore for the city and it's a poor image for our city. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Carpenter? I think there's more than one parcel there, but I think the largest parcel is owned by Brockton Agricultural Society that's controlled by Mr. Carney. Um, the, uh, we really need to sit down and look at what the best use of that parcel is going forward. I agree. I don't think the Brockton Fair is going to be running much longer. Um, I think there are some mixed uses going on there right now. I mean, that is in a key strategic location, a gateway entrance to the city as you come in off of 123 Belmont Street into the, in, heading towards the downtown from, uh, from the highway. So it's absolutely a key location. I think we also have to consider the concerns of the people that live next door as we develop it. We need good, smart, reasonable development of that parcel. And I think almost anything there would look better than what's there right now. Thank you. Mayor uh, I think I'll just be rehashing probably everybody's response. I mean, it is it is privately owned. Um, I have had conversations with Mr. Connie in particular about the the state house building and and seeing what he might want to do with that building because it, it was in its day a very beautiful building. I mean, it really was the hallmark of that whole area, and it could be a beautiful building again, and it could have uh, I think a good potential use. And so that's something that you'd have to work would have to work with Mr. Carney on. I, again, it is a prime piece of real estate in a prime location right off Route 24. Uh, there could be a number of ways to utilize it, but it would have to be done in concert with the neighbors in the neighborhood because it does abut closely a residential neighborhood that they should at least they should have some input into what's going to go there at, or at least have be engaged in terms of the development. But it is a large parcel and a very important parcel in the city. Thank you. The next question will go to Mr. McMillan first around performance management. Will you adopt performance management measures for department heads and their staff within city hall departments? Uh, I would definitely uh, institute that, especially for the, my department heads if I were mayor. Uh, we have some issues here with the way the residents are being treated at city hall. It's not a friendly uh, place to, to deal with. Um, whether it be the type of payment plans they have, the, no, the lack of electronic permitting, um, but as far as the department heads go, they work under the mayor. The mayor uh, is, 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 uh, re appoints them. Um, so they, um, I, some of them are in the unions. Um, so, um, but the, uh, definitely the, that will have to be negotiated. But uh, I'm a, I, I myself am a union person. I've been in been this uh, steward for a while, uh, former steward. Uh, I, know, I know how uh, to go get around with the contracts. I know how to negotiate with them with the contracts. But definitely performance uh, is definitely going to be a must my my administration. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mr. Carpenter? I think it speaks to the larger issue. We need to start running city government more like a business. We need to start operating this city more like a business. And I, and I think a piece of that is holding your managers accountable for the performance of their departments. Uh, and I would absolutely hold the managers uh, accountable for the performance of their departments, whether that's uh, you know, sending out incorrect water bills, putting liens on houses of people who received incorrect water bills. Those are all management responsibilities that fall under the CEO. And I think that um, treating constituents uh, courteously and in a positive manner and politely uh, starts at the top. And I would set that example. Uh, I, I will consider myself to be a customer service person if I'm sitting in that corner office as the mayor. And I'll work with the door open. I'll be accessible. People will be able to get in to see me. Uh, and they'll know who I am. I'll be out in the community. I think that's all part of the image and the way we operate the city government. But absolutely, unions are not an obstacle. You need to work positively, cooperatively with the unions. I'm a union supporter. You establish relationship with the unions and achieve common goals together. Thumbs up. Thank you. Mayor Balsati? Uh, actually, there's a, currently a subcommittee that's being formed to review and begin to look at uh, performance uh, management system. Uh, as uh, Council McMillan stated, some of our department heads are in unions, so it is an issue that's going to have to be bargained with some. We have uh, pers two personnel uh, experts on it, as well as um, individuals from both private and public um, sector. So uh, that will be beginning, and um, the, I believe the committee is hoping to release uh, some kind of report or results uh, by the end of the year as to how we would do it. But they will look at all of the different issues about those department heads that are uh, by <coughs> ordinance appointed and those department heads that are in unions. Uh, all department heads were not, many of them were not in, in a union um, until it was prior to my administration, um, and I think even prior to Mayor Harrington's administration, I think it might have been at the end of Mayor Units's, but I, I'm not positive what the date you. was. And Mr. Matter? Yes, I believe all department heads should not, not only uh, be held accountable for what they do, but they should also be, uh, uh, they should be uh, held accountable, and they all should be uh, a reliable, uh, Excuse me. <coughs> you know, I, I'm sorry. Uh, they should they should be qualified. We should only hire the most qualified people. Uh, that's one of the major problems we have right now. I believe that a lot of our department heads are not fully qualified. They don't have any kind of uh, review on how their performances. And uh, I believe that they should every year have a, a, a review. But more than anything, we should only hire the best uh, people to run. <coughs> The city should be run like a business, and I'm the only one sitting up here who has any business experience. I have never claimed bankruptcy. I've always had success in running businesses, and I believe the city should be run like a business. And we should only hire the best qualified people to help run the city. And that, that is Thank what you, uh, we up. think we need to do right now. The next question will go first to Mr. Carpenter about Brockton's image. What is your top priority to make Brockton more attractive to new and existing businesses? I think I've outlined my plans for, to attract business to the city already, but clearly at the top of the list is we need to get uh, crime under control in this city. This uh, epidemic of violent crime and property crime and uh, the, the damage that it does to our image, the Boston TV stations parked out here constantly reporting the latest uh, stabbing or shooting in the city makes it very difficult to convince businesses to, to locate here. And it also scares the daylights out of our existing business owners who are now afraid that their customers will be afraid to come to Brockton to do business. So we, uh, we need to institute uh, a dramatic, uh, dramatically different approach uh, to restoring safety to the streets of the city. Uh, that's why I've asked a gentleman named Bob Hayden to join me as my uh, special advisor on public safety, a former deputy uh, superintendent of the, of the uh, Boston Police, a former uh, undersecretary of public safety under Governor Salucci, because uh, making the streets safe and reducing crime will be the, my number one priority when elected. Thank you. Mayor Belzati? Uh, I think in efforts to improve public, uh, I'm sorry, improve the city's image is kind of a dual or even uh, a triangular thing. It, it is public safety. Uh, we have been doing a lot of work in terms of public safety, uh, both reactive and proactive, working um, with young people, getting grants to reach out to young people, uh, putting in beat patrols, uh, a, a number of things that we've been doing. But it's also our education component 
And um, I think that, that uh, our school system is a, a wonderful opportunity for us to highlight our community and to continue to do that. But I think it's also, again, goes back to the branding and the marketing and working and taking what's good about this city and, and promoting it uh, above and beyond um, the scale that we've been doing. And, and we're going to continue to do that. And we've made efforts to start and we'll continue to build upon those. Thank you. Mr. Meadow? Yes, I think the best way to improve the image is public safety. We need to have a full uh, police department. Right now, we're about 80 policemen shot. We need to uh, we, we need to have a full police force and make our city safe and get our reputation back. This in, this in turn will bring businesses and people back to the city, and we can expand our tax base, and we can lower our taxes. Until we make public safety number one, and we and we need to implement a full police force, uh, our images will not change. I was told by a <coughs> law enforcement man if we had 40 more police officers, we could put a dent in the crime, and if we had 70 more, we could win the war. So until we do that, we're not going to improve our image. We need to cut down on the crime and the violence. And then we can, then we can go out and bring businesses and people back into the city. And that will uh, expand our tax base and cut our taxes down. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah, the reality is our image is not going to change overnight, and it's going to take a long time to improve that. And that's, as everyone's confirmed here, it's, it's public safety is a must here. But we actually need to connect with the residents. We need to connect with the, with the city. As far as the police department goes and the city officials go, there's a, there's a huge disconnect right now uh, with us, uh, with the uh, city police and, and the residents. So we have to improve that. That's the first step. Uh, part of my action plan is to expand the ordinance and the code enforcement. Uh, that will clean up the city, uh, the image, uh, the people next door, the you know, they have all types of trash out there. We have to make sure that the residents are comfortable in their own surroundings. And that ordinance enforcement and code <coughs> enforcement, we only have one police officer, we have one firefighter, and we actually have, um, I believe you, Mr. Carpenter. The Board of Health. The Board of Health. That's only three in the whole city of Brockton. We definitely have to expand the, the manpower there and improve the city's image that way. So that's what basically I would do. Thank you. Yep. The next question is the final question, and we'll go to Mayor Balzati first about a Main Street manager. If elected, will you hire a downtown manager, and what are your immediate plans to improve Main Street? Actually, the, um, I changed the job description of the um, staff planner that we will be hiring um, once we hire our Director of Planning and Economic Development, and that individual is going to be tasked with being a Main Street manager. And that, or, or that's going to be part of the, the um, position or requirements that they deal with the businesses on Main Street and start to work towards being able to have that kind of position and that kind of contact uh, for the uh, businesses on Main Street. So it is a, is a start. And um, once we hire that position, we will have those kind of things available. Uh, the planning and economic director, it's very important that that position get hired and filled so that we can continue the progress that we've made in downtown. But that's uh, the way that we're going to deal with uh, that issue as of this time. Thank you. Mr. Meta? Uh, I believe we should hire a city full-time city planner. I don't believe we should have a downtown manager. Uh, we, if I'm elected, I will hire a full-time city manager to a uh, city planner to work with me and uh, businessmen to help develop downtown Brockton. Uh, we need somebody with hands-on ability to uh, start planning what we can do to improve our downtown area. And I believe it can be done with a, a full-time city planner uh, rather than a, a manager. So I, I believe that a, a, city man, a city planner is the best way to go because then we can uh, work, like I say, work with my office and with businesses to improve our downtown. Thank you. Mr. McMillan? Yeah, um, I'm not in favor of a Main Street manager for the, for the for sole purpose that we, as City Council, just uh, put in an ordinance in place where we have to hire a city planner. And, and they're also hiring an assistant city planner. Those two jobs right there should do the job as the downtown manager. Uh, I know the uh, Main Streets, uh, Boston Main Streets uh, were being mentioned, but that's, that's basically uh, extra money that we have to spend. Uh, they use CDBG money, and the CDBG money can be used, uh, utilized elsewhere. Uh, we have a position in place, uh, going to be in place at the city, city planner. 
Uh, once that's hot, once that person's hired, that's their sole job is to improve the area. So they're going to be managing the city and managing development, even including Main Street. So I think it would be a waste of money to hire us a third person uh, to do that. We have the entities right now in place. Uh, we have to hire actually the, the we'll be hiring it in the beginning of the year a, a full time uh, city planner. So that person right there will be doing that job. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Carpenter? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I've been advocating for the city adopting a Main Streets program for five months, so I'm very pleased to hear that the mayor's decided to adopt my proposal. Uh, the, uh, the Main Streets program is a national program. It's to revitalize urban business districts. Long term, I'd love to have more than one Main Street manager. Menino brought this program into Boston in the late 90s, started with 10 of these Main Street managers. Huge success today. There are 19 of them, 19 business districts in the city of Brockton, uh, Boston. In the city of Boston, they have their own Main Street manager. Think of places like Roslindale Square, Dudley Square, all these different business districts in the city of Boston that have been revitalized using this program. It's a different job than what the planner's job is. I understand we're hiring a planner for $136,000 a year. Uh, a Main Street manager would cost a fraction of that, would come out of uh, CDBG money, and eventually I'd love to have five Main Street managers in the city of Brockton, north, south, east, west, and downtown. They work, they have a proven track record, they're nationally recognized. You, we up. need that program here. Thank you. The candidates drew tickets for the order of their closing remarks. Each candidate will have one minute. The order for the closing remarks will be first Mr. Matta, second Mayor Balzati, third Mr. Carpenter, and fourth Mr. McMillan. Mr. Matta? Again, thank you for providing this forum. I have outlined my common sense plan for the city. Leaders don't react, they act. When I spotted corruption in the school department, I alone, as a resident in Community Act, activists took action when elected officials sat back. When residential and commercial taxes got out of control, I co-founded Brocktonians for Limited Taxation. And as a group, we made sure that our voices were heard at City Hall. Unfortunately, they fell upon deaf ears, and this is why I'm running. We haven't invested properly in our infrastructure. We haven't invested adequately in public safety. The other candidates are making a lot of promises. I ask you to peel back catchphrases and look behind the local large political signs. When you vote on September 17th, ask yourself, who do you trust? If you want Brockton to get back to government basics, away from baseball stadiums, failed water plants, and power plant quick fix schemes, and you have the hope for the future, I ask you to please give me your vote on September 17th. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Basadi? I'd first like to thank uh, the Metro South Chamber of Commerce, uh, in particular all the, the Chris and all of his staff, and, and Sue for moderating as well as the current chairman, Bill Morse, for having us here today, and thank all of you for being here. Um, as mayor for the past four years, I've built an experience record of moving Brockton forward. We have made progress in a number of areas. We've prioritized public safety, brought real and tangible economic development initiatives to fruition. We've built on the success of our top-notch educational opportunities for our kids and for our future. And we have strengthened the quality of life in our neighborhoods. And we've done this work, and we've kept the city moving forward during some of the most challenging financial times in our history and there's no doubt from our work downtown for example or at the Westgate Mall or with our small businesses that we are in fact moving forward and that we're working to ensure a bright future for the city that all of us love it is this work for our community that makes it an honor and a privilege to lead Brockton each and every day as mayor and I'm proudly asking for your vote Time's and up. continued support Thank on you. September 17th Mr. Carpenter Thank you, Sue, and thank you to the Chamber. Uh, I'm running for mayor because it's time for change in the city of Brockton. It's time to get Brockton property values going back up and to get property ta Brockton property tax bills going back down. It's time for Brockton residents to be at the front of the line when there are Brockton jobs to be filled. It's time to get guns and drugs off the streets of our city. It's time to bring jobs and businesses back to our city. It's time to take back control of our neighborhoods block by block. That's why I've announced my 10-point plan to restore safe neighborhoods to Brockton. Brockton fights back. And that's why I've asked Bob Hayden, the former Undersecretary of Public Safety for the Commonwealth of Mass, to serve as my special advisor on public safety. It's time to make changes in Brockton before Brockton becomes the next Detroit. I ask for your vote on September 17th because you know me. I've been actively involved all over this city for the past quarter century. My name is Bill Carpenter. I respectfully ask you for your vote on September 17th to serve as your next mayor. 
Thank you. And Mr. McMillan? Thank you. I, I want to thank you, uh, Sue, and thank the Chamber for having us here today. Uh, I'm not going to read off any pieces of paper right now, so this is all coming from the heart here. Uh, I'm, I'm going to bring in this your ne next day, uh, uh, the common sense approach with a no-nonsense attitude. Uh, we need here, uh, what we need here in the city of Brockton is a leader. We need someone there that's going to make sure that the job is getting done, whether it be the department heads, whether the attitudes of the workers are better, uh, that there's a huge disconnect with the community. That's what I'm going to bring in as, a city, as the city's mayor. I've been mean, uh, city council for the past eight years and, and Ward 7. I'm proud of my accomplishments, and I will roll up my sleeves, dig in, and we will make some changes that are necessary to improve the quality of life with our residents. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you all. It's, it's critical in a democratic society that we have candidates who are willing to stand up for what they believe and willing to run for office. So I'd like to offer a round of applause to the four candidates yeah. today. So thank you to Mayor Linda Belzotti, to candidate for Mayor Bill Carpenter, to candidate for Mayor Chris McMillan, and to candidate for Mayor Ron Matta. We'd also like to thank Brockton Community Access for filming today, the Chamber's Government Affairs Committee for sponsoring today, the Chamber's Board of Directors and staff, and a special thanks to Phil Carver and UMass Boston for sponsoring the entire 2013 Government Affairs Committee meeting. So again, thank you all for coming, and please remember to vote in the very important primary on Tuesday, September 17th. Thank you all.